Can't believe you put Viagra in my beer. It was an honest mistake. Because, folks, if you can't drug the one you love, then drug the one you're with. Drug the one you're with. Wait, don't do that. That's a crime in every single state. Book Club came out in 2018 and was directed and written by Bill Holderman, who did A Walk in the Woods and the upcoming book club, the next chapter. Because, of course, when you have something based around the book club, the next chapter is the only logical title you can go with. I'm going to a special screen of that in a few days. Why? Why not? So I decided to revisit the first book club, obviously, to refresh the fact that, well, this movie, well, certainly entertaining and provides some good moments and some good uh, social commentary on life and accepting love and Understand you're never too old to love or love the one you're with. Okay, I already did that. It has a cast full of people. When they were in school, they didn't have history. Their social security number is one. I'm probably going to spoil quite a bit of this because it's been out for five years. <clears throat> but it is about, wait for it, a book club. I know. Aaron Sims also helped write this. You have Diane Keaton playing Diane. I know. A woman named Diane being cast to play a woman named Diane. Talk about goddamn typecasting. Goddamn. Maybe they said, Diane, we know you're old. We don't trust you to remember any other name. We're going to give you this. We're going to make it easy. And Diane's like, oh, thanks, dicks. So she plays a woman named Diane who lost her husband recently. Her kids are kind of overbearing, worrying that she can't really take care of herself. They, they care about their mother. They just want to make sure she's all right. One of the kids is Alicia Silverstone. A couple of years before, she was in The Lodge and did what she did. If you've seen The Lodge, you know what I'm talking about. If you did not see The Lodge, go watch it. It's great. See, I even allowed you to just pause it to see how great it was. That's a stark contrast from this movie. You know, it's a rom-com about elderly people getting together and finding out that you're never too old to love and accept people and be happy. And it's funny that I say that rom-coms are now my wheelhouse, not the genre I go for, yet I reviewed an awful lot of them in the past few years, especially last year into this year. Almost like I'm either lying to myself or I'm desperate to just review whatever, because why not absorb content? More content, yes, more movies in my brain. I did watch this, but decided why not get a refresher. So we have Jane Fonda playing Vivian. A woman that likes to have lots of sex and no attachment. 80-year-old at this time, Jane Fonda, having constant sex. You're welcome for that image. You're welcome. You're welcome. It will be seared in your brain. <laughs> uh, Candace Bergen plays Sharon, a judge, that um, her and her husband separated a number of years ago. She's not sure about love at all. She has a Persian cat that is adorable. Kind of reminds me of a Persian cat I had years and years ago. Don't worry, she passed away due to cancer, but she had a happy life, and she was old even then. Cats are great. Adopt, don't shop. So, Candace Bergen uh, took over the Lily Tomlin role, like Lily Tomlin in Moving On, which was more of a dark comedy and a romantic comedy, and also in 80 for Brady that was more of an attempt at a comedy, in the same that I attempt to basically get out of bed without straining any muscle these days. 80 for Brady wasn't very good. Moving on was, and this, coming out a few years before, this was endearing and fun and actually had some good social commentary <laughs> about making sure that, guys, just, it, just it, it don't, don't fight love. I mean, obviously, you want to stay guarded, especially as you've been scarred or you've had issues and stuff happen in your life, but accept that good things can actually happen to you, even if you think they can't. So, Carol, Mary Steengarden... Uh, who was the youngest out of these people, youngest out of the book club, 65 years old. God, she's almost a baby compared to everybody. <laughs> um, four women, lifelong friends. They're, you know, they're having things go on in their life, and they decide to spice up their lives by reading the Fifty Shades of Grey book. Yeah, elderly women getting turned on by the Fifty Shades of Grey book. You're welcome, because it scarred me. They didn't really show anything. It was more just the jokes and everything. And actually, it was rather effective and rather well done, all things considered. Here are the guys that were in the movie, by the way. Andy Garcia, who's 62 years old. He plays Mitchell. No, not the Joe Don Baker character from that MST3K episode. Craig T. Nelson, who kind of looked and spoke, or it kind of looked and moved like one of those bodies from a... You know, that they didn't move in poultry, guys. That's mean, but he didn't look very healthy. And Ed Begley Jr. was in this. 
dating a woman at least 30 years younger than him. Ed Bagley Jr. is 69, nice, in 2018, and Richard Dreyfuss is in this. In all seriousness, this movie is actually rather endearing and well done. And while not reinventing the wheel, it also has it also has a nice sharp wit to it. It's safe, but it also has some good stuff as far as the women gain in, in these particular situations. And it's just something that's enjoyable. Don Johnson's also in this as Arthur. There are no invisibles in this, more in the pity. But you get various <laughs> scenarios where these women either date or find somebody in particular, but aren't sure if they want to branch out or they just want to stick with their friends and not, you know, put themselves out there. And from there, we have a romantic comedy. One that we probably have seen before in various incarnations, but with the star power and with the endearment about this, it actually turns out to be pretty good overall. You get Diane meeting Andy Garcia's Mitchell on a plane. <laughs> they have a bit of a romance. And you also have Sharon, who meets Richard Dreyfus from a uh, dating site. Actually has a funny moment where she's uh, putting the, uh, the the cream mask compress on her face and ends up um, <laughs> ends up taking pictures on her laptop or tablet because she doesn't understand how technology works because elderly people, am I right? And also, Craig T. Nelson's uh, Bruce and Carol probably have the closest dynamic to an actual relationship I can see. It's not that anybody else is fanciful, but this one of a marriage that is about communication that isn't exactly reaching the other person <clears throat> and some people you know one particular party feels like they're not being accepted and another while the other party feels like they're not being accepted and it's for different reasons and there's actually a pretty good revelation a little bit later on as to why and it makes sense um it is all effective and you know endearing enough it's not great but it's entertainment and with a movie like this you just expect entertainment and um, Candace Bergen at one point saying, I haven't had sex in 18 years and it's been the uh, best time of my life. Um, <laughs> this is how it started, four best friends in a book. And it, it is what it is. It's not, it's not a bad movie at all. It's rather entertaining. I'm going to get into spoilers. And yes, the book club next chapter review will be up sometime Sunday evening because why not? So yeah. Let's get into it. This is on Paramount Plus, by the way, if you want to check it out. Or if you happen to own it, <laughs> pop in the Blu-ray before you watch the other one. I mean, why not? It's it's endearing enough. And most of the cast is returning for a sequel. Hooray! Three, two, one, and spoilers. Okay. <clears throat> Diane and Andy, or Diane Keaton and Andy Garcia have their whirlwind romance while her kids are trying to make sure she's all right, and her daughters are kind of being a little bit overbearing, assuming that she's just old and elderly, and while they <clears throat> love her, they're assuming that she's just all washed up and not able to do anything, and she finally has to reveal a little bit later, like, hey, I can do this, I want to be with somebody that makes me happy, and you kids are great kids, and I love you dearly, but I have to go out and do this. That's pretty much her story arc right there. Candace Bergen ends up meeting Richard Dreyfus. <clears throat> And also uh, Wallace Shawn, who was uh, inconceivable. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. He makes like, I think he's in like one scene. He's in one scene. They had to have him stay on a box so they could see him. I kid, I kid, of course. He's actually a pretty good actor. But there's a good, uh, there, there's a funny moment between Candace Bergen's character <laughs> and Richard Dreyfuss's character. Where they're on a date. The, date, the date's going to end and they end up in the backseat of her car. And it's, it's funny. I don't know what she couldn't figure out this like this like bodysuit type thing to hold stuff in or whatever. <clears throat> I think it's Lane Bryant. I think it was Lane Bryant stuff, and she wore it wrong in like one earlier scene, which was kind of funny. But yeah, Richard Dreyfus and Candace Bergen bumping uglies in the back seat of a car. You're welcome. If I had to picture it, then so do all of you people. <laughs> Carol and Bruce. Carol um, has Bruce doing dance classes. Bruce recently retired. Bruce is fixing stuff up around the house because he's worked for 40 goddamn years. He's not sure what to do with his life. They haven't really had sex in a while. <clears throat> they did They did do that constantly, but ever since his retirement, he's felt a little lost. He eventually has to confess this to Carol. 
And there's actually a pretty good revelation a little bit later on as far as like that. And, oh, it makes sense as to why Bruce has been so distant. <laughs> and then um, Vivian, of course, obviously has to learn to accept that Arthur, who was a previous, you know, in, in a previous part of her life, actually does care about her. They rekindle, they meet, and it's a heartbeat. Uh, the Don Johnson song, Heartbeat. There's a deep goddamn cut. The, the funny part at... <clears throat> Near, um, near, uh, like, a midpoint or whatever is where they get together. They get on the roof of a car, <coughs> roof of a hotel, rather, that Vivian owns. Roof of a car would have been more hilarious, but they have, um, a good discussion, and it's a good romance, and Diane Keaton and Andy Garcia end up on an inflatable, uh, swan in a pool <coughs> at Andy Garcia's house, and then the kids realize that their mother didn't actually fly home to take care of anything, and they track her phone like uh, according to this cop this cop tracked her phone and then she tumbles into the goddamn pool and andy garcia is trying to tell her it's okay you know hey it's kind of funny but don't worry about it all the women kind of separate from their particular people except carol who's married to bruce bruce kind of has to put, set some boundaries and then they all end up realizing hey you know we do deserve love and romance and also talking about 50 shades of gray disgusting but nevertheless um <clears throat> The music's fitting. There's a cool part with Paul Simon's, <clears throat> let's see, Paul Simon's Late in the Evening. Actually, it was a very, very good um, inclusion for a plain, uh, plain scene before, you know, Diane and Andy Garcia end up in the pool. And then there is a point where Carol tries to excite um, Bruce by putting Viagra in his beer. And then he gets pulled over and has an erection wall, you know, the cops talking to him. And he's like, look, you know, this is what it did. And she said, yeah, he hates being embarrassed. Read the room, Carol. And then Diane is going to move to Arizona with her kids. This is the last book club. Which, obviously, they'll reunite for the next one. Because otherwise, how would you have a goddamn sequel? Um, um, there's a double marriage ceremony between Ed Bakley Jr. and his wife. And his and uh, Candace Bergen's son in the movie and his uh, uh his soon-to-be wife and candace bergen makes a speech and everything and realizes her judgment her judge job totally goes out the window apparently they just found somebody to sub for her while she just wanders around and acts drunk but nevertheless that if that isn't a um indicated indication of the state of the judicial system in this country i don't know what is <laughs> but vivian basically stops um you know stops seeing arthur blows him off even after he confesses his love for her and then has to go and pursue him while they go to carol's show <clears throat> and actually it's a funny moment where they're setting up this whole stuff with vivian getting her dressed and everything and then she goes out trying to find him and then carol does some uh does a dance class thing to, or a dance recital or competition tap dances to meatloaf Craig T. Nelson shows up, and that's actually kind of funny there. Arthur came back for Vivian. They reunite and everything. It's all happy and go lucky, and Diane and <clears throat> Mitchell end up together, and it's all happy and go lucky. And now we see what happens in the sequel. Look, it's fine. It gets a B plus. It's entertainment. It's entertainment. It is what it is. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm Charles Rutland. I'll see you soon.